All right, hello everyone. I want to show you a famous scene from Bugs Bunny, which was my favorite cartoon when I was growing up. Still think it's great and brilliant. Though these days I'm more into South Park and Old Simpsons, but I just think this is kind of funny. Now, you're probably saying, well, gee, Mark, what the hell are you even talking about? Have you gone crazy? Why are you talking about a Bugs Bunny cartoon? And you know what? You're probably right, but I just remember this Hassan Chop. Hassan Chop. When they found the cave with all the gold and this guy was the bodyguard. All right. Let me tie this together with how this can become a trading idea. A sign is the symbol for something I want to look at. So I don't know. I saw a sign and it just made me think about Hassan. All right. So that's it. Let's move on. Now, I think there's a good chance there's an, a, a play here on the short side, meaning it's going to go lower. When I say short, that's kind of Wall Street slang. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're actually shorting the stock. It means you're taking a position that will profit if the price goes lower. For example, the most simple one is if you buy puts, you are long a put. But if the market goes lower, then you're going to make money. So if you buy a put, you are considered short. It's just slang. Like I said, it's not a, you know, ultimate guarantee. And as a matter of fact, I recommend to my students, don't short stocks. It's very risky. You could end up losing a lot of money if it goes against you. If you buy a put, the most you can lose is the amount you paid for the put. So you have a guaranteed maximum loss. Whereas if you shorted a son and tomorrow this thing gets bought out at $100 a share, well, you're going to have to sell it at 22 and buy it at 100 and that's not going to be nice. So anyway, let me show you or tell you why I think this is interesting. Markets are always going in trends, okay? They're either going up, down, or sideways. That's just one of the realities of markets. It has nothing to do with fundamental news. It has nothing to do with what they're saying on Bloomberg or CNBC or Fox Business News. It's just psychology, all right? And supply and demand. When a market's moving higher, like Asan was here, there's not enough supply or sellers to fill all the demand or buy orders. So the buyers are forced to pay these higher prices. When we get up to a resistance level, all of a sudden there is a lot of supply. For whatever reason, this is where the sellers decide to come out. So we're moving up here. We get here, get to resistance. Now, some of the investors that have been watching this thing and they're waiting for it to go higher, start to say to themselves, hmm, this hasn't moved in a few days. Maybe there are other sellers coming into the market. I better undercut them and have the lowest price in town so the buyers come to me, and this starts to snowball effect. Now, when we get above a resistance level, we call that a breakout because it could potentially show us that the sellers or the investors who created the resistance with their sell orders are out of the market. So a lot of times when we get to a former resistance level and we move through it, we get these kind of big moves. Now, a couple things to watch here. A lot of times in markets levels that were resistance can become support. Just what, look at my SPY presentations. You'll see it's all over the place. It's very common. The best traders understand that price levels are one of the most important things you need to pay attention to because for whatever reason, some price levels are more important than others in markets. That's just how it is. Sometimes we know why, sometimes we don't. For whatever reason, this Asan found resistance here. It likes this level. This is 20 to 20. Now, this is what got my attention. All right. Markets are always either going up, down, or sideways. When markets are going up, the bulls are in control. If we have a slow reversal from bulls to bears or a change in leadership, it shows up on the chart as like this kind of a rounded pattern we can kind of see down here. If it goes from bulls to bears in maybe a couple days, it shows up as like a V on a chart. If understood correctly, chart patterns are just graphical illustrations of what's going on. And when a stock or a market, I'm just going to use stock for you know easiness sake, when a, when a stock starts to trade with the way that might become a reversal, it shows up on a chart. Like I said, it could be slow, it could be a couple of days. Sometimes that trend changes in a single day. 
and that's why I am bringing up a son. There's a good chance we might have had a trend change here. See, the blue team's in control. Now, the red rectangles are days where the close is lower than the open. The blue rectangles are days where the open is, is lower than the close. So open here, close there. Open here, close there. Let me say that again, because I might have messed it up. The red days are days where the close is lower than the open. The blue days are days where the open where the open is lower than the close. Now, if you were to look at this particular stock on Friday, you would have thought it was going to be another up day. This is where it opened. All right. It even got all the way up to here, above 25, almost to 26. But by the end of the day, what happened? It reversed and it got all the way back down here. It's almost like if think about football, like a team is marching the ball down the field and they get to the one yard line and they, you know, whatever, it's fourth and goal or first and goal, second and goal. The red team makes a goal line stand and they turn the tide, they turn the momentum. So opened here, got up to here. Then for whatever reason, the sellers just came in and started to knock this thing lower. And this is where we closed. So here's what I'm looking at. We got this reversal day. It could potentially show us that the trend has changed very rapidly. In other words, the bears are taking control from the bulls. We also stopped at a level that was resistance. So it's not a coincidence that this is where the, where the close was. There tends to be support of former resistance levels. Because like I mentioned, seller's remorse. People sold and they want to buy their shares back. Now, here's where the trading idea comes in. If we break this support, meaning we get below it, there's a good chance that the buyers who created this support or the investors who created this support with their buy orders have left the market. They are finished. They canceled. doesn't matter. And that sets the stage for a move lower. So we got a reversal, potential reversal day. We got resistance that has turned into support, at least for the very short term. If this support breaks, I think there's a good chance that this thing trends lower. Remember, everybody, the best traders let the market tell them what to do. They don't have preconceived notions. How does the market talk to you? How does it act when it gets to particular price levels? All right. Thank you, everybody. Hassan Chop, and I will talk to you soon.